Hi, I'm Richard Miller and I'm a driving instructor from Halifax in England. I have made this video to help you pass your driving theory test first time. You should watch this video if you want to discover helpful information such as how to book your theory test online without getting ripped off. I'll show you where to get a free ebook that will help you learn all of the road signs. I will show you how to fully understand the questions and figure out the answers to those questions that you don't understand. I'm also going to show you the best software that you can get to practice for your theory test to make sure that you pass it first time. It is currently available at a discounted price so make sure you stay tuned to get information about that. Let's not waste any more time, let's start with the first tip. My first tip, I'm going to show you how to book the theory test online without getting ripped off. So let's take a look. So first things first, you need to actually book your theory test. Once you book it, Sounds obvious, you've got something to work towards. If you keep putting it off, you'll never go and book it, you'll never go past your theory test. So first things first, we'll book it online and we will type in book your theory test. Now when we click that, we get a couple of ads up here, look. Now these guys are paying to be here. That means they're going to charge you to get their money back. So we're not going to use them, we're going to go straight down to this one, which is gov.uk slash book theory test this is the official government website and you can just click the link and go through the process of booking your car theory test should only cost you £25 do not pay more than that if you pay more than that you've gone to the wrong site make sure it is gov.uk slash book dash theory dash test now another top tip is know your road signs you need to know all of the signs and I'm going to show you where to get the book. Knowing your road signs is a great way of getting easy points on the theory test. If you know the road signs you've got more of a chance of, of passing it first time. Road signs go into three different categories. Circles that give orders, triangles that are warnings and rectangles that give information. When it comes to the circles, the blue circles give positive orders, things that you should be doing. Red rings on white circles tell you things that you shouldn't be doing. Most triangles are this way around, except for one sign which is the giveaway sign where it seems to be upside down. It's that way because if there was snow covering the giveaway sign it's quite important that you know what that sign means. So it's upside down, it's the only one that is, and then you know that you need to be giving way to another road that you're about to enter. So I'm going to do some uh, practicing of the road sign category here on driving test success. So if we go down to road and traffic signs paper one and create session, we see this first question, which of these signs shows that you are entering a one way system? So if you remember what I said before, it's the rectangle signs that give you information. So we can um, remove these two from the equation. Now it says you are entering a one-way system. Now which one looks like one-way and which one looks like two-way? For me this looks two-way and this looks one-way. So if you didn't know the sign, it's kind of obvious that this is the answer, B. Now which of these signs means turn left ahead? So we've got all blue circles which are telling you what you should be doing. So then we need to look at the actual um, icons on the sign. Now this one's telling you to go around in circles by the looks of it. That's actually the sign for a mini roundabout. Now this one doesn't say turn left. It says keep left and keep right. This one says keep left. But this one, if you're following the sign upwards, driving up the sign, we go on for a bit and then we turn left. So that one is turn left ahead. Now what does this sign mean? Well, it's a circle with a red outer ring, so it's telling you what you shouldn't do. So this one says keep in lane, in one lane, that's not telling you what you shouldn't do. This is saying form two lanes, it's not telling you what you shouldn't do. It's saying do not overtake or give way to oncoming traffic. Well that again is telling you what you should do, not what you shouldn't do. So there's only one that says do not, so that's got to be the answer. Do not overtake. Now skip the practice to get to this question, which of these signs means the end of a dual carriageway? 
So is it A, B, C or D? So if you look at this sign D, the road is straight on this side and then it narrows on the right hand side. On this sign A, the road narrows on both sides. On this sign B, the roads actually come together. So this is the correct answer, it's the end of the dual carriageway because there is no longer a central reservation barrier in the middle. Both roads come together. Now there are many road signs that you need to learn and there's a free book available online. If you go to the link that's on the screen now, you can go and get this book. You can see there's 144 pages worth of information about signs. I'm not going to go through all these signs with you right now because that would be a very long video. So go download that book, start learning your signs and that's the first step to passing your theory test. Another top tip, which may seem obvious, is read all of the questions and the answers. So what I mean by read the question, if you do this your vehicle has antelope brakes but they may not always prevent skidding. This is most likely to happen when driving. Straight away you're looking and you're thinking what will be the answer and you start thinking well if it's a loose road surface we'd probably skid but also surface water. So I'm not too sure I'm just going to scratch my head for a while and figure it out when actually if you read it it says select two answers. So the answer is both of these. So make sure you do read the question where it does sometimes say select one answer and it sometimes says select two answers. So this one select one answer, what is the most common cause of skidding? Driver error, worn tyres, pedestrians, other vehicles. If you think about it, someone who makes no mistakes when they're driving shouldn't really have to be in a situation where they end up skidding. So even though worn tyres um, are going to add to the chance of your skidding, driver error is probably the most common cause of skidding. So we can select that one. Here's one where you, you might just run through it quickly and, and think that you know the answer. But you are in the left hand lane at traffic lights, you are waiting to turn left, which of these traffic lights, blah blah blah. And you might just think straight away, left, turn left, that one, I'll press A and I'll move on. But if you don't read it completely, then you might be missing something. You are in the left lane at traffic lights, you are waiting to turn left. At which of these traffic lights must you not move on? Not when can you go, but when should you not go? So it's always going to be B, because the red and amber just means prepare to move off. All the other ones you would be able to go if you were turning left. So do make sure you read the whole of the question and all of the answers. Here's a good tip to make sure you get through all of the questions. Don't spend time on those tricky questions. Here's what I mean. If you're unsure of any of the answers to any of the questions, remember you've only got a certain amount of time to answer these questions, so there's no point in deliberating too much over them. If you're unsure, what you can do is just flag the question by clicking the flag, and then move on to the next question. Now at the end, when you've answered all the questions that you know the answer to, you can click Review, and then you can see the number of flag questions you can go to review flagged then you'll have more time to come back and just figure out which one is the correct answer which on this one would be A now my number one tip is get some good practice software for a laptop or a tablet you want something that's a large screen so that you can replicate what's going to happen on your actual theory test now the one I recommend is driving test success it's the UK's number one and if you click the link on the screen now it's also in the description. You can get it at a reduced price for a limited time only. I'm not sure when the price will be going back up, so click the link and get driving test success now. In this part of the video, I'm going to explain the hazard perception section of the theory test. A hazard is anything that causes you to stop, slow down or change direction. There are three states of a hazard. A potential hazard, a developing hazard, and an actual hazard. A potential hazard could be another road user that doesn't seem to be um, a problem at the moment. Maybe they're just walking by the side of the road 
but they're worth keeping an eye on just in case they decide to start to cross the road. Another example could be a road on the left, there's no one at the road but someone might be about to appear at that road, so we'll keep an eye on that. The next state of a hazard is a developing hazard, as the potential hazard starts to develop into an actual hazard, i.e. something that's in the middle of the road stopping you or making you slow down or change direction. An example of a developing hazard could be the person that's walking at the side of the road decides to tra change direction and looks like they want to cross the road. That's when it first starts to develop into a hazard. That is a developing hazard. The third state of the hazard is the actual hazard itself. There's someone in the road that's causing you to stop or someone does pull out from a side road. The idea of the hazard perception test is to spot the hazard developing before it fully develops into a hazard. You need to click when you first see the hazard start to develop. In reality, we'd be checking the mirrors when we're out driving, but on the hazard perception test, you click when you see the hazard start to develop. If you wait longer, so you see the person press the pedestrian crossing, but wait a couple of seconds before clicking, you may only get 4, 3, 2, 1, or even 0 points. It all depends on how long you took to spot the hazard developing. Don't forget, in reality, when we're driving along, we don't want to be clicking mouses, we want to be checking mirrors. Take a look at this example. Here's the first example, click the potential hazard is the bridge in the road. It becomes a developing hazard when cars start coming through. So the next car that I see I'm going to click for because it starts to develop to the point where we might have to slow down for that car. Now we're getting a bit closer, we can see that there might be another car coming, so I'll click for that one. And maybe this was the developing hazard. And yes, you can see it fully developed. It caused us to slow down or stop. So I should get the points for that one because I saw it as soon as it came around this bend. Now we're driving on because there might be another place where a hazard develops. We've got tractors on the right going around the bend, looking out for anything that might give a clue of any potential hazards that might develop into full hazards. Bridges may develop. I'm going to click on the bridge because I can't see much. And then I'm waiting for this bridge, the potential hazard, to develop any more. If a van comes round the corner, I'll click on that. And you can see I did actually get 5 out of 5. So when we look back and review this, the potential hazard again is the bridge. You can see where I clicked. You can see where I clicked the second time or the third time, and that's where the scoring window opened. So if we look at this now, I clicked for that car, but then the next car is the one that scored me the points, because I clicked as it starts to develop, and because it fully developed and caused me to stop, I got the five points. So the potential hazard was the bridge. The part when the bridge started to develop was when the car was further up the road round the bend, and you just saw it come round the bend, that's when I clicked, and then when the car actually stopped me, that was the hazard. But because I clicked when it first started to develop, I got the five points. So this is the next video clip. You can see this road here is a side road. It's a potential hazard, a potential hazard on the left as well. The potential hazard is maybe there might be some deer in the road. Other side roads, again, potential hazards, making sure none of these want to turn in there. Looking around, we've got a potential hazard, which is the pedestrian, another potential hazard. Neither of them look like they want to cross the road. So we're looking down the road. We've got cars coming towards us, potential hazard, nothing going on with them. And then we're looking around, with, there's a road on the left. Oh, there's someone there clicked for that one. The cyclist, more potential hazards. But the cyclist was definitely the one that turned into a hazard. He caused us to slow down. I'm pretty sure I will get the five points for that one. But it came out of that side road very quick, so we're looking further up the road. Potential hazard, the pedestrian crossing. There's a mini roundabout too. And we're looking. That car wants to turn, so I will click there. Ah, and that's it. Five out of five. So we'll go back and we'll review that. And we'll see how close I was. So you can look at the timeline. I clicked at the very beginning. And we're looking. Again, we've got these potential hazards, but nothing ha actually happened. Nothing developed, nothing started to develop that might have caused me concern. All these cars are just driving down the road. Now we're looking at the timeline, you can see the scoring window, the red area is where I got five points. You can look, potential hazard, potential hazard. 
I'm going to pause it here because I know the cyclist did come out of the road. There. Now look there. The cycle is just visible and that's when the scoring window did open. Now if I press play there, it's still on 5 points, but there it's 4 points. So if you see it just a little bit too late, it's a really small window of opportunity between 5 points and 4 points. You've got to be really on your game, you can see there it's too late. That's 4 points instead of 5 because it's already near the edge of the road. So if you want to score the 5 points, you've got to see these really early. See there it goes 3, 2, 1 and then here 0 because he's already caused us to slow down. Here's another hazard perception clip for us to look at. It's potential hazard pedestrian, potential hazard pedestrian, potential hazard car. Nothing happening that suggests that they're going to develop into a hazard. We're looking down the road, another potential hazard, the pedestrian. There's a junction on the right, there's a car there on the left but no problem. I clicked for that car. It might be about to come out there, I clicked again. And I clicked again because it's set off on the damn learners. Oh, what's it doing? <laughs> now, we know what it's like, don't we, learners? Things like this can happen, so be very wary of learners. I'm guessing that that's definitely the uh, scoring window right there. We'll just have to see how many points we've got. So let's review the solution. So if I click this and go back through, we've got a side road, potential hazard, like I say, pedestrians, they're not looking like they want to cross, they're just walking along the road, you're not going to click, there's no point in clicking, you're not going to score any points for them. You can see, this is where we do click, this is where I did click. Looking down the road, cars, pedestrians, and then I click first time because I see this car on the right coming out. And I clicked again because it looks like it's going to speed up and come out and then it stops. And then I clicked again because it set off. Now that's where I scored the five points, because in the end it did cause us to slow down. So don't, don't be afraid of clicking too many times. If you're clicking for the right reasons, then it will not, um, it will not be an issue. So here we go, look, you can see where the scoring window actually happened when it set off again. You can see the L plates on the side, which aren't normal, but um, you can see that's definitely the thing that caused us to slow down. Right guys, I'm afraid that's all we've got time for today in this video. If you enjoyed it, let me know in the comments below. Also like the video and share it with anyone else that would find it helpful. You can subscribe to my channel using the button at the side. You can also watch videos below that are relevant to you. Thanks for watching. See you again.